Hi guys, welcome to another series of this weekly weekend market analysis. Uh, for the first thing I'd like to do is to walk you through what happened for the previous week. All right, so uh, if you follow our video as well as uh, you subscribe to our newsletter, you have received our previous week uh, weekly market analysis report as well. All right, so last week in in, in last week report itself what we shared is uh, there are some key events to look out for and one of it is actually uh, RBNZ government's Wheeler's speech all right uh, I'll, I'll share a little bit about that uh, in just a minute all right but let me walk you through some of the other economic data that uh, have been released for the past week as well so uh, last Tuesday itself you can see uh, in this Forex factory event calendar all right we have uh, various flash uh, PMI is being released right and if you look at the actual versus the forecast and the previous uh, overall it's been uh, pretty neutral in a way uh, most of them are above 50 which is actually under the expansionary um, area right but uh, only the French flash manufacturing PMI fall below that uh, and then missing the estimates as well as the German flash services right but overall if you just look at it uh, from a bigger picture point of view um, it's not it's not really that bad uh, in terms of the eurozone uh, fundamental data all right moving on into into the week all right thursday itself we have german ifo business climate uh this came in pretty bad uh coming in at 106.2 uh versus the estimates of 108.5 uh, uh previous data you know was also at 108 region all right so this uh definitely gives some dent towards the, the euro strength itself all right, uh, core durable goods from uh, US itself came in way positive, 1.5 versus the estimates of 0 0.4. Uh, but because of uh, most of the focus will be on Friday where Yellen, you know, share and, and as well as the Jackson Hole Symposium, all right, uh, the core durable goods from, from Thursday didn't really impact the market much. All right, and of course for Friday, that's, that's the highlight of the week. All right, uh, I'll walk you through a little bit more uh, in depth over here in terms of what was what was some of the statement and key highlights of the Jackson, uh, Jackson Hole Symposium. All right, uh, of course, we also included this uh, into the report, all right? And basically, overall, the tone is pretty hawkish uh, from, from the speech that's given. Uh, we might even see, you know, potentially two rate hike, uh, but the probability of it is really low. All right, but uh, having said that, uh, Yes, the Fed is pretty hawkish, but uh, again, it boils down to whether the fundamental economic data actually support it. All right, so before we go into into next week, uh, some of the key data to focus on, let me just quickly go over. You know, just like I mentioned about RBNZ government Villa speech, All right? Uh, it it happened on Tuesday, so uh, we do have the chance to actually blog about it uh, during our midweek uh, market analysis. We also publish this on our website. All right, so for those who, who would like to follow our website for such uh, blog and intro week market analysis, all right, feel free to do that. All right, so the highlight of this speech is that uh, over here we concluded this statement. All right, as part of the concluding comments by Wheeler, all right, he mentioned that there will be another possibility of another 35 basis point of rate cut in the future. All right, so this statement itself uh, kind of give give. Give some forward guidance to its uh, traders as well as the market that uh, RBNZ might see another potential rate cut uh, in 2016 alone. All right, but he added this comment and said that uh, the current outlook uh, and risk itself, RBNZ will remain flexible with their policy changes and are not in a position of rapid easing. All right, so this one uh, kind of balanced out the dovishness of the previous statements simply because uh, recently they just lowered their interest rate. So uh, coupled with the fact that, you know, uh, the possibility of the rate cut, right, is that uh, the next time the RBNZ is going to meet and, and decide on the interest rate is actually on the 23rd of September. So that's about a month later. So be, between now and then, right, uh, because of this statement that uh, they, 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 they might not in a position to be uh, doing a rapid easing, right? Uh, we might still continue to see some strength uh, in terms of Kiwi simply because of the risk environment, all right? But uh, having said that, you need to know how to pick uh, the, the right currency pair, right? Uh, to go against, uh, to go according to Kiwi strength, all right? Because of course, if right now you're going to pick uh, Kiwi dollar, right? Uh, it's not a good pair to long Kiwi, all right? But I'm going to go, go too much into this all right uh, if you want right just simply read onto this blog post itself so let's jump into next week 
All right, so next week itself, the first key important data definitely coming in is on Monday. All right, uh, the title of this of this video is actually four key datas to watch to watch out and confirm for the strength of uh the dollar bulls. All right, so the two data sets will be coming in uh on Monday, right, at the beginning of next week itself, which is your core PCE price index as well as personal spending. All right, if you look into this detail, uh. It is important. It's an important uh, data, even though you know in, under forex factory they put um, a medium kind of impact, right? But uh, if you really understand what are some of the data that the central banks are looking at, uh, this itself the core PC price index is very important, uh, and the forecast is coming in at zero point one. So if anything surprise to the upside, all right, uh, coming in the actual coming in more than zero point one will confirm the bullish strength on dollar index itself. But of course, if uh, this missing the estimates, all right, maybe coming in at zero or even negative territory, it might um, it might shift some of the sentiment towards a uh, more bearish side of the dollar itself. All right, so Monday itself, the key focus will be on these two data from the US. Moving on to the week itself, all right, um, nothing much on Tuesday as well as Wednesday. All right, uh, again, not a very eventful week. But if you look into Thursday, uh, the focus shift towards Aussie because we have uh, important Chinese data coming in, manufacturing PMI followed by Aussie retail sales as well as Chinese manufacturing PMI from China later on that day as well, right? So if you look at the forecast itself, uh, it's not pretty, uh, pretty, pretty optimistic, all right? You look at manufacturing PMI is below 50, uh, even Chinese manufacturing PMI is just slightly above 50. Right, uh, but Aussie retail sales is expected to come in at zero point three, right? So if you're trading the Aussie um as well as Kiwi itself, all right, basically the the Australia and the and the New Zealand dollar, do take note of this data on Thursday, all right? And of course the, again the highlight of the week will be on Friday, all right, with uh the average hourly earnings as well as non pump non farm payroll, all right, and uh NFP itself. If you look at the forecast for this time round, all right, and NFP is expected to come in at one eight six thousand. Uh, as compared to previous of two five five, again, is a is a is a downgrade of of expectation with average hourly earnings coming in at zero point two versus the previous data of zero point three as well. Right, so uh, among these two data again, I would like to highlight that average hourly earnings will be more of a key component as compared to NFP simply because our unemployment rate is already uh, under full employment according to the US Fed. Alright, so uh, what to expect for this is of course uh, if average hourly earnings coming in uh, 0.3 we'll see the bulls confirm. Uh, I doubt that you know coming in at 0.2 itself will be sufficient to hold uh, continue with the momentum and the sentiment of the bullish dollar. Right, so uh, best case scenario ideally is we would like to see uh, average hourly earnings beating the forecast uh, beyond 0.2. All right, uh, and of course, uh, we cannot omit that uh, NFP has to come in at least in expectation or even better. Right, so that those are the few key risk events to monitor for next week itself. Let's jump into some of the markets as well as the charts to take a look at some of the opportunities that we can take. Alright, the first one will be your S and P five hundred. Alright, let's look at the equities market first. Alright, uh, last Friday you can see because of Yellen, right? We do see a dip in the S and P, but if you look out, uh, and in in terms of the overall picture, alright, we do still expect a decent retracement back towards the thirty eight point two Fibonacci, uh, around the twenty one hundreds level, for any long opportunity. Alright, right now, um, it's not decent. Alright, but uh, simply adopt uh, the wait and see for S&P itself. For German DAX itself, alright, uh, as expected, price has respected the previous resistance level and rejected. Currently, what it's doing is actually trading in between the previous resistance and support level. Alright, so right now, uh, there's not much of an opportunity that we can take, but wait for price to at least, you know, move towards the support or resistance area and look out for a nice price action uh, you know, a rejection of the resistance or a rejection of the support level for more confirmation to enter. Alright, for Hang Seng itself, uh, price is currently just below the support zone. Alright, we do see not some nice bearish candle. Uh, our own expectation is that price will event sorry, will eventually drop and retrace back towards the previous support level. 
all right, which confluence with a 50% Fibonacci retracement, all right, uh, right over here highlighted in the red zone uh, before any upside uh, retest again, all right. So uh, for Hang Seng itself, we do expect price to drop. Uh, Nikkei itself, all right, uh, price didn't move much as of last week. It's currently still in a range environment consolidating. We do expect this weekly support level of uh, 16,000 to hold. All right, and if this support level does hold, all right, we do expect price to actually rally up towards the previous high, which confluence with Fibonacci extension of 127.141 as well. All right, so look out for any long opportunity over here at the previous support level should price fall back down towards this area. All right, so those are the four commodities pairs that we are looking out for. All right, uh, overall, if you look at the of, of uh, in, in terms of the US, the Europe, as well as the Asian market, uh, not much in terms of uh, indication as to whether is it going up or down, all right? But uh, pretty neutral, pretty mixed. Let's look at it to the commodity, commodities market, all right? The first one is gold, all right? Uh, because of dollar strength, we do see a nice rejection of pin up here as well. So what we're expecting is uh, this demand zone will eventually be broken. All right, and we expect price to retest the previous support level uh, around the 12, uh, 12, 1, 1, 2, 6, 6 level. All right, so look out for a potential buy entry over here. Then uh, the next one is to look out for silver. All right, silver uh, as expected and analyzed last week as well. All right, uh, the previous support and demand area has been taken out. Uh, now it has shifted towards uh, becoming a resistance area, all right? And price has been moving towards the next support level around the 18 uh, even handle, all right? So if price give a nice price action rejection of this support level, uh, do look out for a potential long opportunity towards back, uh, back into the supply zone around the 20.4 region. All right, so opportunities to long the silver will be around the 18 even hundreds. Uh, the next one will be crude oil, right? Uh, in terms of crude oil, nothing much over here. All right, basically, uh, last week itself was in a, is in a very tight consolidation area. Uh, as of now, not much that you can take advantage on uh, unless, you know, it break below the support and then we wait for retracement or it break above the supply zone, all right? Uh, but... My personal take on the oil market is that uh high uh fifty fifth the fifty level all right will be a very strong resistance and supply area for price uh in terms of crude oil to actually break through all right so my bias of this is due towards the downside for oil itself all right so with that uh let me go over to the currency market all right the first one we want to look out for is our wicks. All right, overall, Wix is still currently trading below 220, uh, which is the market risk level. So right now, we are currently still in a risk-on environment. All right, looking at dollar index, uh, this this huge rally was due to Friday. All right, so our expectation is uh, moving into next week, all right, uh, high chance is that the sentiment and the bullish momentum will continue. All right, and we might see some form of resistance over here at around the 9680 towards the 9650 region. All right, so if price put in a very nice kind of rejection of this area, uh, we do expect a retracement towards the 9520. All right, so you can look out for a potential short opportunities up there. Going into euro dollar, all right, uh, very, very, the relationship between this and the dollar index is almost perfectly inverse. So again, similar, uh, the next support area that you have an opportunity and to look out for is actually at the 1.1050. All right, uh, we do expect this support level to be breached by next week itself, all right, riding on the momentum as well as the sentiment from, from, from dollar itself. All right, uh... Pound dollar, nothing much, all right? Still in a very tight consolidation. Uh, the, the the next area or the key areas to actually look for a short opportunity will be all the way up at one point three five, all right? Uh, the probability of price going up there is is slim. Uh, but the, the idea here is uh, if there's no opportunity to trade on this, just to stay away. All right, uh, dollar yen will be the next one. Uh, we shared last week, all right, that this demand zone confluence with 
retracement as well 786 might provide a very decent support and we can see that after that price rallied all right together with the fundamental on thursday uh friday itself so right now we do expect uh dollar yen to rally all the way back up towards its previous resistance right around the 106.3 all right of course there's another minor resistance over here at 104 uh, but if this level is breached, the next resistance level would be easily attained. All right, so right now for this currency pair, uh, we'll be looking to write this trend uh, upwards for next week itself. All right, Aussie dollar, uh, we do see that this trend line has been broken. All right, uh, but the lower one is currently still testing. Uh, but having said that, with, with the sentiment and bullishness of dollar from last week, we do expect price to continue dropping dropping as of next week towards the 7450 region right and then that's where you can look for a potential opportunity to buy into aussie dollar for a for a retracement kind of trade all right so it's a simple setup as of now i'll uh, just wait for price to drop towards this area of 7450 for usd cat all right uh as expected uh after a break of the trend line, we don't enter straight off, but we wait for a retracement, all right? And we can see that last week itself, that retracement was made halfway through. The areas of interest, right, for us will be up at the 1.3145 1 1 region, all right? If you look left, that's where your previous resistance are, all right? So uh, we are waiting for price to come back up towards this area. For any short opportunity riding back towards the previous low at 1.278 all right so that's for dollar cat uh the last one to go through if i'm not wrong uh, let me just quickly check all right uh will be kiwi dollar all right so kiwi dollar uh as shared this one during the intra week uh intra week market analysis all right this entire area is a very strong resistance all right all the way back from 2015 february and march so we can see price tested one two three four and then eventually fifth time right before it built up a very nice rejection of it all right this uh steep trend line has been broken so we do expect price to at least fall off next week to retest the minor support or even this trend line all right uh this is a tricky pair to trade new zealand dollar so the best advice or recommendation is to avoid trading this currency pair itself all right so that's about it for this week market analysis so if you have any questions feel free to drop them under the, the comment section below this video or feel free to drop me an email all right uh with that i'll talk to you uh for next week video itself